So the big news last week was the Supreme Court's decision to strike down student loan forgiveness. I shouldn't really say that that was the big news because everybody pretty much anticipated that. The actual big news was later on that day, the Biden administration finally put out the final rules for its new repayment program called SAVE. In this podcast, I'm going to go review what it is, what are the final rulings, when are they going to take place, when you can apply for it, who's it best for, and even if you're not new to repayment, some of you might have been in repayment from years ago, you might want to pay attention to this because there's now a new loophole for you to be able to take advantage of these plans that wasn't there before. So we're going to jump into it before we do. Welcome to the podcast. If you're new, should be sure to subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, welcome there as well. Subscribe, hit the notification bell. All that stuff helps us grow the channel, gets the word out, um, and it helps you get notified when new uh, episodes come out and new information comes out. So that way you guys are always educated, not just on student loans, but investments and home buying and, and everything else that goes along with financial planning. And if you get a chance, share this with your friends. Um, if it's helping you, I'm sure it's going to help them. Share it with your colleagues, your coworkers, everybody else. It will all be appreciated. It's a win-win scenario. Let's jump right into it. Um, <laughs> one thing right off the bat, I think these things are always kind of corny. Like the acronyms they come up with these things, like revive, like pay as you earn, P A Y E, like you know, save. Uh, it stands for saving on a valuable education. <laughs> Which is ironic because actually, I, you know, all the Facebook groups and Instagram, a lot of you guys complain about how the degrees you got because of the loan amount it got it wasn't as valuable as it should be. And now they're calling this plan saving on a valuable education. So that there's kind of some irony in there. Anyways, all jokes aside, um, that's what the new plan is going to be called is save, S-A-V-E. Okay. Um, basically, what is it? It's an income driven repayment plan and it's revised pay as you earn just revised so it's a revised version of revised pay as you earn okay um in short what you need to know about that is repay is no longer going to be an option okay it's it's going away this is replacing revised pay as you earn okay so right off the bat i know some of you will ask well what about pay as you earn or an income-based repayment plan and the reason why you're asking is that when these plans first got announced back in like January or February or whatever it was, um, the way it was worded was that all the other plans were going to go away for income driven parent plans. This was going to be the only option. Okay. Um, and we also had put out some stuff about a month ago saying like, based on that wording, you had to have been in re like pay as you earn in repayment before this takes effect. And, and our guess was July 1st, cause that was the only date that was ever thrown out there. Um, all that stuff is wiped out. Okay. Uh, there is nothing in the wording that they released saying that pays you earn an income based repayment will not be available. And therefore you don't have to be on pays you earn prior to repayment because, you know, in order to stay on it. So for those of you that, that went on it and called your loan servicer and told them to end COVID forbearance, just in case you can call them up and say, hey, like, I don't want to be, or put me back in a COVID forbearance until student loan starts. So that's first things first. Okay, so this replaces revised pay as you earn. And as of now, the best guess that we have is that pay as you earn and income-based repayment plans will still be options, okay? Now the features of this, there, there's five or six primary features. The key is some of them are going into effect before repayment starts. So September 1st of this year, some are not gonna go into effect until next year. So we're going to start off talking about the ones that are actually going to go into effect this year. Okay. Um, the federal poverty line adjustment is one of the big ones. For those of you that don't know what that is, um, you know, on income-based repayments, your payments are based as a percentage of your income, but it's not your total income or your gross income that you make every year. There's adjustments that the government makes to that. Okay. So, the biggest one is, is basically an adjustment for the poverty line or discretionary income is what they call it. Okay. And what they do on that is they take this thing called the federal poverty line. Uh, so for example, like if you're single, that federal poverty line is $14,580. Okay. And then they gross that number up. Currently it's grossed up by one and a half percent. So in that example, it's just shy of $22,000. So if you earn $75,000, they reduce your income by $22,000, which is basically 53,000. 
And then from there, they say, hey, like your payments are 10% of that number, of that lower number. Okay. So therefore, in that example, your payments would be about $440 a month. Okay. The big adjustment on these is that that federal poverty line, that adjustment goes from 150% to 225%. And so long story short, in that example that I just gave you where your payment would be about $440, it would then drop to about $350. Okay, so that is the big thing. And that drop is going to be more pronounced for things like if you're married, if you have children, so on and so forth because the poverty line increases for the bigger your household is. So that is a major adjustment underneath um, this new uh, SAVE or SAVE plan, okay? Where I can see, for example, this really coming into play um, combined with one other one is for like married couples, for example, like if one person says, well, I'm gonna work at home part-time or stay at home full-time because we have children, I mean, there's a good chance, like, like I say, you have two kids, you can like the single person can or one person can basically be making like 80 grand a year and your payments are going to be like zero dollars. OK, um, or very low. So uh, going to be big adjustments there. Also, it's going to really like if you have a low income, um, like like an undergrad degree and you're making like 40, 50 thousand dollars a year, your payments are going to be extremely low on these. OK, so as I've stated in like other podcasts, so that's one of the big big things the other portion is the interest subsidy um right now when you're on repay actually when you in general when you're on one of these loans uh repayment plans one of these income-based repayment plans let's just say that your payments are 300 dollars a month but your interest is 500 dollars a month therefore you're not paying 200 dollars of interest so your loan balance grows by 200 dollars a month currently on repay there's a repay what's called a repay interest subsidy and so that dollar amount that you for like that you defer gets cut in half each month so in my example again instead of deferring two hundred dollars a month you would only defer one hundred dollars a month okay that's underneath repay with new save s-a-v-e it's a hundred percent subsidiary subsidiary subsidy i'm sorry i can't even talk this morning okay so in that same example like if your monthly payments are three hundred dollars and your interest charge is five hundred dollars uh, that two hundred dollars literally disappears. You don't owe it, so your loan balance on this will not increase. Now, there's some major repercussions on that. Those of you that have seen us like some of these podcasts in the past or read some of our stuff about like taking advantage of the repay interest subsidy, like if you're trying to pay off your loans, you are going to be able to save a ton of money paying off your loans on uh, like using this now. What are the details on that? I'm not going to talk about it in this podcast. It's going to be probably a completely separate podcast because I got to go into details on that. However, I'm not going to release that podcast or talk about that in the near future, at least for a few weeks, because we don't know how that process is going to play out yet. So once we know that process, I will let you guys know further ways you could take advantage of this new subsidy. For now, all you have to know for the purpose of this is with the save plan your loan bonds will not increase anymore, okay? The last major thing that's going into effect before September 1st is for married borrowers. Currently, if you're on revised pay as you earn, it doesn't matter how you file your taxes. Um, Your payments will always be uh, based on combined incomes and combined federal student loan balances, okay? That is changing. It's gonna be like the pay as you earn plan now. You can file separately and your payments are only based on your income. Again, this is big because it allows you to drop your monthly payment, but it also allows you to potentially use what we call the married filing separately loophole, where you can do some things where you amend your documents, get a tax refund, all these different things. Bottom line is it gives you a lot of flexibility and an ability to save potentially a lot of money if you're on existing repay and you're married this gives you a way potentially to save even more money. Okay, so those are the three big, big changes going into effect um, prior to September 1st. Again, it's the poverty line adjustment, which affects the monthly payment, the interest subsidy not accruing, which will actually reduce the tax that you owe at the end of these when they're, they're forgiven. And then for married borrowers, your payments are gonna be based on your income and your debt only if you file separately. Now, there's 
three key features that are going to be implemented um, next July 1st, okay, um, in 2024. The first one is that the percentage of income that these are based on currently is 10%. That is going to be dropping to 5% for undergrad loans, but that will not happen until next year. If you have a combination of undergrad loans and grad loans, it's going to be a weighted average based on the balance of your loans, of the initial loans. So what percentage came from undergrad, what percentage came from grad school. So that's number one. Um, the term on these, I know a lot of you are grad students and doctorate students, so this probably is not going to apply to most of you, uh, but it is a big deal for some people. Um, currently, the term of repay is 25 years. For most of you, it's going to stay the same thing. However, if you owe $12,000 or less, then it's it's 10 years. Um, and then everything above that, so every $1,000 above that, they add a year and then they cap it at 20 years for undergrad and 25 years for, for graduate studies. So basically, if you owe over $25,000 and you have grad school loans, this is going to be a 25-year plan. Okay. Um, so that is how that works. Um, the last one, this is one that will affect people that have been, that are older borrowers. This is major, major, major news for you. Okay. In the past, you might be on like old IBR, which was like 15% of your income or something like that. And you would want to change into some of the newer plans that take advantage of the benefits of them. But let's just say you've been paying on your loans for like 10 years. The only way you can go into the new loan, the new repayment plans is by consolidating. And if you did that, you were considered in a new loan. And since it's a new loan, those like 10, 13 years that you already paid don't count. You literally had to restart that 20 or 25 year clock. So it prevented a lot of people from going on to the newer plans. This changes that. Save, if you go on to save, you will be allowed to consolidate your loans, go on to save, and the past years that you've paid qualify towards the loan forgiveness still. So you don't lose the years that you've paid anymore. Okay. So those are the, the things that are going into effect next July. Okay. Again, that's the percentage of income is changing. The term, if you owe like a lower balance, like 25 grand or less is changing. And then if you are an older borrower, you're going to be able to consolidate and go on to this new plan and still have all those past payments count towards loan forgiveness. Okay. Now, those are the things that are changing. What are the, the key things that are staying the same? First of all, it's a percentage of your income. But the biggest thing that stays the same is the tax bomb. So they don't bring that up any of that at all in any of, of the language, meaning when your loans are forgiven, you get to claim it as income in that tax year and pay taxes on it. I'm not surprised there's nothing in this bill or in this new plan about that. The reason why is because as you guys know that listen to this, like, you know, I, I study politics a lot because of my investing background and typically politicians, especially presidents, like they know at max they got two terms. Um, so anything that doesn't really affect them during their term, they, they really just don't, part of my language, don't give a shit about. And the majority of people having these things forgiven won't take place until 2028, 2029. That's when we're going to start seeing this influx of people getting their loans forgiven on these. And so that's when the tax bombs are going to start hitting. President Biden won't be president by that time. So he's not worried about that right now. Okay, so maybe we'll get something about the tax bomb down the road. Right now, nothing as of now. Okay, um, the earliest I'm anticipating we might hear something about the tax bomb is actually 2025. That's the earliest that I, I think we're going to hear something or the, that conversation brought up. We'll see if I'm right or wrong on that. Okay. When will this new repay plan be available? It already is. So if you go on though, like the studentaid.gov, because that's where you would apply for this, you're not going to see it say save probably. Or if you go onto your loan servicer, it's not going to say save. It will probably still say repay because they're making these changes. But as we get closer to the September 1st deadline, if you want to go on this, you can choose repay and they're automatically going to switch you onto this new save plan once everything goes into effect September 1st. Okay. Um, now, the final thing, one of the, the big things I want to talk about 
is this right for you to do? Every situation is different. And it's about 50-50 right now, primarily because at FitBlux, we, we work primarily with grad school students. So we see it about 50% of the time, it's helping people, 50% of the time it's not. All of our tools, our calculators, our financial plan, building technology, all that stuff, has these new calculations already in it. So if you need help, all you have to do is schedule a call to your FitBlux coach, and we'll run through these scenarios with you. But what we're seeing for a lot of people, that the actual pay as you earn in the long run, is actually more beneficial. And what I mean by that is that repay is five extra years. And those are also going to be your higher income earning years probably. And so people are saying, okay, well, how much do I actually save over those five years? If I do save at all, because if I don't save, then it's a easy decision but to go on pays you earn. But what we're seeing most of the time is that repay and pays you earn might save you like fifty to a hundred and fifty thousand dollars over a twenty five year span, and so what a lot of people are looking at and saying is like, well, that's nice seventy five grand hundred grand, whatever it is, but that means I'm in repayment for another five years. I'd rather get out of debt in five years prior. Everybody's different. Okay, that, that's up to you on how you make that decision. But you have to do that projection and that calculation to really understand, hey, how much does repay, does it even save me anything in the long run? And does it put me in a better situation? And if so, how much? Is it worth it to stay in it in repayment for an extra five years? Everybody's answer is different on that. So if you guys need help on that, you need to you know where to go, fitbucks.com, sign up. You know, we can help you. If you're already a member, schedule a call and we'll help you go through all that stuff. Now, there are two situations where we are seeing save this new plan make sense for basically everybody. Like it's a generalized thing. So you still need to check to make sure this is still beneficial for you. But these are the general areas where we see it. One, if you're an undergrad, because your loan terms on save is 20 years. So you don't have those five extra years of payments. The other place we're seeing it is if you're working in a nonprofit and you're pursuing a, a public service loan forgiveness, most of you will want to go on save because you're getting your loans forgiven in 10 years anyways. The extra five years don't matter. So you're going to have your payments drastically cut and it's going to save you a ton of money if you're going for public service loan forgiveness. So those are the two situations where we see this really benefit uh, borrowers or undergrads and those look uh, working at a nonprofit. All right. Um, other than that, that is the big news that you guys need to know about. The SAVE program, like I was saying, it was going to be this year. That, that, that's what I've been saying for a long time. Last week, I put out a podcast that said maybe it might get pushed out till next year. Um, also, because I also anticipate some lawsuits potentially coming on this. So as of right now, though, it's here. Like, it's here. So if you're ready to start planning on this stuff, all of our tools are ready to go. You can make this decision knowing like now. So that way, middle of July, end of July, you can start actually getting onto your repayment plan and you don't have to deal with the cluster of all the loan servicers and everything. Okay, like you can start figuring this stuff out now and don't wait because as we get closer to that September 1st deadline, like loan servicers are gonna be crazy busy. We're gonna be crazy busy. Like we already are. Like we. I mean, my, myself, for example, this week, once some of the student loan news started coming out, I myself had over 60 phone calls, okay? So it's, it's gonna get busy one way or the other. Start getting help on now, don't wait, because it could potentially cost you a lot of money. You wanna know what you guys are gonna be doing on this. Um, stay tuned, uh, other blogs, other uh, podcasts are gonna be coming out as we get more information on these things about like, for example, that repay interest subsidy, is it going to be like the same for save? Is there going to be like a save interest subsidy? Is it the same process? Because for example, you could potentially pay off your loans. Like if you owe like 60 grand, you might want to use this type of, of plan and use this loophole that we talk about instead of refinancing, for example. So I'm going to be coming up with those coming up here soon. I will probably put out a podcast describing it a little bit more because I want to make sure that you guys don't make a mistake and refinance too early before we know the details of how this save interest subsidy thing is going to be working. So keep an eye out for that podcast probably sometime this week. Um, because again, I don't want you guys making mistakes on that when these things start hitting. As always, thank you. Subscribe, 
We'll see you in the next episodes. Talk to you guys soon.